the last video we saw how to create a couple of traffic lights. In this video, we are going to talk about time and timeline, okay, more in detail. We, at the end of the last video, we talked about that what if we have a simulation mm, time set in Anima which is uh, smaller than the actual simulation we need, okay, for example. Well, let's see how the timeline works more in detail, okay. So, at the left side of the timeline, we have the play button. Now, this play button is the one that comes uh, by default set, okay? But as you can see here, there are more options, okay? Well, this play button here, which is the play button, the play icon with the uh, square brackets, okay, is the standard one. When we hit the spacebar, okay, we have a look directly to the simulation, okay? The execution. Perfect. Now, if we change options, left-click on this little um, arrow um, at the top right, we have different, several options. We have this play, which is a normal play without the square brackets. Um, what happens when we hit spacebar with this play button set? Well, the difference is that at this moment, I can still see the traffic lights, the areas and the, and the path um, while they are simulating mm, the characters on it. So I can see when this traffic light changes, if the characters are stopping exactly where they should, mm, and so on and so forth. So this uh, mode here, it's very, very useful to do what? To check that everything is going the way it should. Okay? Very, very important. Okay? By keeping all visual elements of the simulation mm, on top of the simulation itself. Okay, in the scene. And then we have the third option, which is this, which is a play button, okay, that we can click to generate, mm, to grab a video of what is happening in the viewport in Anima, okay? And this is very, very useful too, because uh, you're working on a project, on a simulation, let's say two minutes simulation, very, very complex and so on, and uh, you want to show the your work in progress to the client. Then you render this video, you show it to the client and the client have an idea and can give you feedback on what you're doing and, and so on. This is a lot better than export the uh, simulation, importing in 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, the program you prefer, okay, and then render the animation and so on, okay? It would take a lot of time. So this way it's a lot better, a lot faster, okay? That's it. Then we have, of course, our timeline. Hmm? And then on the right, we have this other button with the options we can set for the timeline. But before going to these options, let's talk about how the timeline works. Now, we already saw <coughs> something about the timeline with using this middle label, okay? We can left-click and drag and scrub the, si the simulation, actually the, anim the animation, okay? And this label, hmm, contains a number which is the frame, the current frame we are looking at mm, in the animation. This is very useful just to, well, scrub it and see mm, little by little, frame by frame, what ha what's happening and details more uh, clearly, okay? But we don't have just this label. We have also other two placed at the ends of this timeline. The first one on the right, on the left, sorry, mm, defines the start of the timeline at the moment, zero, frame zero, and the one on the right, 900, is the end of the timeline, okay? Now, we can left-click and drag these two, and what happens? Well, we are defining a smaller, a lot smaller range of time we want actually to work with. As you can see here, usually the timeline, when you create a scene, and you have you haven't still simulated it, the timeline will be completely black okay then when we hit spacebar or left click on the play button okay the first thing that happens is that this black bar is slowly mm, filling with this light gray bar this is the simulation bar okay this is when the simulation is calculating and then starts mm, the yellow bar, which is the playback, okay? The part of the animation already calculated that is playing at that moment. So imagine that we are working 
again with a two minutes simulation very complex very um, and each time we want to try something and see something we need to wait for the calculation to be over to the playback to reach the, the, the point we need so this is not very very uh, optimized okay so what we can do we can choose to calculate the simulation just of a single portion of this uh, timeline the simulation itself and play it there so we can optimize our uh, the uh, our time workflow okay so this is very very important so left click and i will set it back these uh, these labels where they were okay and i will left click on this button on the right on the timeline okay and these options appears now the first two options are uh, the most important the total frames is exactly the number we have here the total number of frames we are using we are setting for our timeline frames defines actually the length of our simulation but in terms of frames okay the second option is the one i prefer sincerely because it's the total time in seconds i prefer to think about seconds instead of frames and i will explain you why so at the moment the this simulation is set to 30 seconds so if we should work on a two minutes simulation these 30 seconds are not right we should mm, set it to 120 seconds okay which are two minutes mm? for example let's say we change this value to 15 seconds what happens to the total frames they mm, are now an half of before because because these two options are related but how they are related then to know how these are related we need to go to the fourth option which is frame rate fps frame per second okay this is a frequency the number of frame frames rendered per second and this at the moment is set to 30 so if we have 15 seconds and 30 frames per second, 30 times 15 is 450. So for this reason, when we set the total time to 30 deg no degrees seconds, the total frames becomes 900, okay? 30 times 30, okay? This is important to understand. Then we have the playback speed. Playback speed is exactly, exactly does exactly what it says and we can change from 100% which is the standard the normal speed of course we can slow it to 10% creating a slow motion effect okay up to 2000% 20 times faster well I prefer to use here 100% okay and these last two options are related especially to what as I told you this on the left Mm, this button this play button here let us grab a video so these options here set what are the characteristics the properties of that video at this moment for example will render at 30 frames per second okay but we also have frame rate presets okay we left click on this drop down menu and here we have several standards here the default one is the NTSC, which is the North American standard, 30 frames per second, okay? Then we have the PAL, which is the European standard, 25 frames per second. The film for movies, 24% uh, frame per second, and so on and so forth, okay? So we can choose one of these frame rate instead of um, writing down uh, directly in this field, okay? But we could do that, no problem at all, okay? And then we can set the resolution, hmm, the quality in this case, but it's related to the resolution of this video we could render directly within in Anima Editor. Okay, so we have three options, the low, the standard resolution, th 360 pixels vertically, hmm, the uh, HD resolution, hmm, 720p vertically, pixels vertically and then the full HD 1080p vertically okay so these are quite simple options but very important in in terms of time duration of the 
of the timeline of, of the simulation and then options for these videos we could grab actually we are going to do this at this moment just to show you how it works okay so i have set this play button here on the left i left click on it okay so as you can see the simulation is calculating and then when it's ended then it starts the playback at this moment a lot slower because it's grabbing mm, it's recording at this mm, the the main uh, viewport okay we can stop mm, this anytime we want so i will just hit spacebar and then the program will ask me do you want to open the previous directory to watch the recorded video well i will left click on yes so here we have the video we can change the name use it mm, editing and it is placed in the previous folder inside the anima 3 essential project we created at the beginning okay so we can watch it with our video player and very very easily okay so with this video we stop here see you soon in the next ones